Okay, so I think I got an interesting one for you guys today. It's a 2010 Ford Escape with a 2.5 liter, and it's got an overheating condition. And uh, it's only got 13,000 miles on it. And they figured they were out of warranty because it was probably built in 11, and then, you know, in the three years, you're in 14 territory. So they brought it to an independent shop, and it has an overheating condition that they wanted fixed. And the shop ended up putting a new thermostat in it and when that didn't work they put a new water pump in it they figured it was a flow issue after the thermostat was opening and closing properly so after that didn't work they told the guy the customer you need a radiator it's plugged up in there and somewhere in that mix somewhere in there um, it was realized that this guy's still under base warranty um, 336 so they finally brought it down to us and had us look at it to replace the radiator. It says overheating is overheating. Uh, we changed the thermostat and we changed the coolant pump and it's still overheating um, and to look at it. So when I got that, the first thing I thought of was, yeah, maybe it had an issue. I didn't know the mileage yet. Maybe it had an issue with the thermostat. Um, and when they filled it, this one has a reverse cooling system. So it's very important to bleed all the air out because these will trap air and cause high perceived temperatures uh, th through air pockets in the actual head. And if you don't vacuum fill them or bleed them properly through the other methods, um, you'll have overheat after changing a thermostat or or water pumps, something like that where you open up the cooling system. So that was my first thought before I saw the mileage and how new it was and all that. Uh, and I, so I drove it around, and by the time I drove it around to the other side of the building and parked at my stall, I already knew what it was. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but th this is a lesson for those of you out there that shy away from the dealers um, because they don't want, they think they're gonna get raped or, or whatever um, on the price. And they, they avoid them at all costs, and they try to go independence to save money. Uh, this independent, actually, in this story, uh, ended up costing the customer a lot of money. Ford's not going to pay for that independent to change all those components. So, like I said, I pulled it around, and by the time I got it around, I actually knew what the concern was. The concern with overheating was happening before they even opened the cooling system up to, to introduce an air pocket to it. And these, these, you know, it's been fine for, what, 12, 13,000 miles, and they, they vacuum filled from the factory, there's been no issues. So it happened before, and that's what prompted them to bring it in. This, is, this overheat happens quite fast, I mean, a couple blocks. And it's only 70, 80 degrees outside, outside uh, currently in our climate, in our region here. So when I got it in my stall, I remember there's a TSB out, and I had one or two before that had an issue with the actual cylinder head temp sensor that gets corroded, gets water in there, gets corroded, therefore the resistance goes higher, and then it, it perceives there's an overheat concern going on when there actually isn't. And sure enough, I went out, popped the hood, and I looked at that CHT sensor, and it was corroded beyond belief. Now it is hidden. So unless you know about this kind of stuff, um, you're not really going to go straight for that like, um, let's say, me, because I know the brand. And that's another thing about going to a dealer. They know the brand. They know the common faults. And uh, we tend to look at them a bit better, a bit closer, let's say, uh, before we start throwing parts at them. So it's very simple. You go in here and you go, oh, okay, it's overheating. You go into your scan tool, which any shop has but they don't think of that first off and you start looking at the temperature now the temperature said it was like at like 270 or something like that and the engine was barely warm it was honestly a problem and then it sat overnight and I can look at it right now it's over 100 degrees it says the coolant temperature is and that's because I pulled the connector off looked at it and put it back on so I cleaned some of the corrosion off so it's only slightly off at this point whereas ambient temperature is about 76 degrees right now so this is something very important to uh, think about when you're bringing it to an independent shop. They might just start throwing parts at like that. Like next thing they were going to do is a radiator. So you got radiator, water pump, coolant, thermostat, and it just all adds up. And all they need is a, a coolant temp sensor and a pigtail. 
So I'm going to go over the repair and show you just what it looks like so you can inspect for yourself. This is more information video than anything. The sensor just screws right in, pulls out. I, I might show it. Um, and then you replace the pigtail with a new one from Ford. But uh, there's no coolant involved at all. That's an actual cylinder head temp sensor where it's sensing the temperature of the metal. Um, it's not doesn't have to dip into the coolant and sense the coolant temp. It's an actual uh, metal of the the cylinder head temp, and they do that now because it's more accurate. But this has that inherent issue um, where it gets the water in there, and then of course it corrodes over time. And uh, this affects you know fusions, transit connects actually. It says escapes. Obviously, we're in right right, right now, and uh, the MKZ. It's basically a fusion. Uh, they all, all the ones that have the 2.5 liter, because they all have that channel in there, and it, it just seeps into there, and the water goes right for that connector, and causes all that corrosion. So I'm going to show you what it, what it looks like, and unless you can inspect for yourself, even without a scan, so you can go and look, and you'll obviously see there's a problem here, and you'll know to change that, and then you can change it out, and then retest at that point. Okay, so here's the engine compartment, and right here in the dead center, I took the coil out already, the ignition coil, just so we can get access to it. But this little plug right here is where, the, underneath that, is where the CHT sensor is at. And that just pulls up and on, it's a little, little boot meant to keep uh, dirt and water out of there. And you can already see there's an issue, let me focus on that. And you can already see there's a major issue by all the corrosion and garbage down in there. So then it's got to pull push the tab in and then pull and this right here is a very very good example of just how it's going to look you can see it's obviously not right on the pins and all the water and rust uh, stains on there and then the actual connector here you can see it's all discolored and rusted on the especially the one pin right there so that right there is a red flag, but you need, like I said, you need to know to go look at this stuff, and that's why it's good to bring it to a dealer, or uh, watch my videos, I guess. And uh... and here's how that sensor looks. It screws down into the head and takes a reading, and this is how it should look, nice and clean. And uh, it takes a 19 millimeter. You can get away with a standard deep well 19 millimeter, as long as it doesn't have a shoulder on the inside. See how this one goes all the way down to the Craftsman this will actually be able to bite onto it. Let's see if we can focus. You can see it just fits into there and it'll fit all the way down in there with this connector uh, piece right here because there's no shoulder on inside of there. So if you're having trouble getting it out of there, just make sure you have a 19 millimeter socket that has no shoulder on it, like so. You can see these flats go all the way down. Whereas this one is a 19 millimeter uh, deep well also. It's a little bit deeper even than the other one. But it's got the shoulder on the inside. So the connector hits the shoulder and you cannot get down in there to bite on the hex. The one other thing that they want you to check for is the same thing. Let me get it fixed. Same thing they want you to check the um, spark plugs and the ignition coils to make sure that they're not damaged by the um, arcing from due to the water because it'll actually take the easiest path to ground and it'll arc out inside of there and this one definitely has water damage to it also down the spark plug wells and, that, and that'll cause misfires. Now when going back together they want you to put silicone sealant around the boot of the actual CHT sensor after you get done repairing it and that's to prevent any future water from coming in here because if you look at it this ridge right here is almost flush it's got a little ridge and that's it whereas the ridge around the um, spark plug wells is, is pretty high so if there's any water it's going to fall into the CHT um, sensor hole before the actual spark plug ones and the other thing the TSB uh, mentions is that they don't want you sealing these holes because there's gases that come through the plugs or something like that that uh, they want to be able to escape and not build up in there so they don't want you sealing these holes just the actual CHT sensor um, plug there 
Now this TSB is covered under new vehicle warranty obviously, but uh, there's also emissions coverage on there too, which can be up to 80,000 miles. So it's something to look into if you have this issue, misfires, overheating, false overheats, um, definitely something to look into, see if your dealer can uh, work on it and get it covered for you.